Hey, what's up? We're Chevelle, and we're chilling here with Gary Poole. What influences did you get from the music from there? Or was it, what, did Chicago play a big role in your sound? Well, the Smashing Pumpkins probably were yeah, was big one influence. of the, for us, that was probably one of the biggest influences. Yeah. And they're from Chicago as well, coincidentally. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the Dave Grohl thing that he did, he did it at Electrical Audio. We actually did point number one at Electrical Audio with Steve Albini. Okay. Yeah, actually, I watched, was it called Sonic Highways? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the other night I was watching it and I was like, holy cow, to see Electrical Audio again was pretty cool. Yeah. It's been how long? Oh my gosh, 15, 15 years. years. Yeah, since we've been in that place. We need to give him a call. Say Steve? what's up. Yeah, we should. Well, we're dicks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a busy guy. Yeah, look. Yeah. Nowadays, a lot of bands are saying being independent is like the way to go. Because sometimes now the, the, the cut of the part is getting smaller with music. And um, how do you, how do you, because I mean, some bands say, they, you know, they couldn't have done it without yeah. labels to start off with. But I mean, how do you find yourselves going forward? And, or not even going forward, how do you see it, really? That is a complicated question. And it's definitely... Here's the big picture. Independent or not, you're competing with every band who's ever released anything, yeah. ever. Yeah. And there's never been more competition than there is now. So if you think you can do that independently, that's fantastic. If you think you can do it with a label, that's also fantastic. But you have to definitely figure out what it is with, the, you know, what works for you. And uh, we have been with the label for many years, and Epic, um, in the US has been super supportive of us and lets us do basically whatever we want and that's all you can ask for you don't have, yeah. we don't have to do anything we don't want to do we don't have to write songs we don't want to write songs we don't want to play every day and uh, you know I think that the, the rock industry is different from probably a lot of other things it's getting smaller no doubt about it it's definitely getting smaller mm. so that it's a really good question we have no idea how to fix it yeah. <laughs> but we're going to keep plugging away you know this yeah. is this we're trying to open up new markets here you know yeah. and yeah we're here without support yeah and on our own coin and yeah. thrown down every night making new fans you know? yeah and it's important because the world is smaller um that being said people ask us all the time how do i get out and do this or that and the truth is at least in the states anyway um you got about one or two rock bands per year that actually have any success at all and whether or not they stay around longer than that who knows but yet you have you know every week somebody wins millions of dollars in the lottery in every state 50 mm -hmm. different states so you're saying it's way diff more difficult to way be in a band starting out to have a successful you know, band especially yeah. a rock band um i mean it's incredibly difficult to win the lottery so how difficult is to, i mean you might as well sign up and be an entertainment lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's actually quite interesting how you're saying you, you've spent your own coin to get you and try and tour and whatever. Um, you know, maybe I was just blinded by the whole music industry. You kind of think of it as quite glam, you know, quite cool. You know, you get onto a label and it's all sorted. Um, sure. Because um, I've got a friend who's in a band and they, they he's telling me about how they got this tour that's coming up. I was like, that's amazing, dude. And he's like, yeah, it's all about money. We've got to pay eight thousand pounds to get onto the, the list. And I'm like, oh really? Oh wow, that's, that's pay insane. to play. Yeah, yeah pretty much. And I was just like, Bummer. that makes it super difficult. Yeah, that makes it really difficult. Yeah, because I'll, you, you're down from square one. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's too bad. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I mean, people should play music. People should write great music. Everyone should be that is into it should be doing it right now. I mean, that's what we need. We always need good music. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Cowbell made its way onto you. Mm. <laughs> the album. Is that uh, just trying some things? With Take Out the Gunman, when we were writing that um, verse, everything that we played was too busy. Okay. You know, so we tried just doing just like a straight picture on it, just doing that, and it was too simple. So I started just keeping time on the, um, on the rim. So it was just like a ticking sound. And we just it just needed something else, so we tried a cowbell and, and it sort of worked. You know, it's hard to put a cowbell in a song, don't you think? Yeah, I mean the queens of the Stone Age do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they're amazing. So Raging the Machine did it quite a bit. They did. Oh, did they? Do? Yeah, they did. Absolutely. Yeah, Blue Oyster Cult did it. It's a classic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. When you when you seen that SNL sketch with that. That's, oh yeah. Uh, when yeah. They, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's interesting that you said like the album just felt too short. 
Mm. So Twinge came along, got born. Oh yeah, yeah. When we were writing, um, we all talked about it, and um, we didn't we didn't really feel like three or four of the tracks. So we kept writing, and Twinge is one of those songs that came out of it. Yeah, and uh, um, I was watching a lot of horror films and things like that, and there was this movie called Melancholia. Yeah. Okay. And it's all about the end of the world and sort of this, you know, planet smashing into the earth and and <clears throat> kind of took that idea and tried to put it into a, a song. And um, I actually had a fan on YouTube come up with a video for it, and he took clips of that movie and he plays the song, and it worked out really well. It was amazing. Like, so this fan was paying a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, it worked out. It was pretty amazing. It's pretty cool stuff. How far does it go with you guys when you, you think the album's done? Or there's still like these panic calls, like, ah, I just don't, I'm not feeling that anymore, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah, and when you leave the studio, that's when it all starts. You know, you're, you're halfway home and you're like, oh, man, mm-hmm. I should have stayed two more days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but we you're always going to be like that. We end up doing stuff at our own studio and sending it yeah. to Joe Barisi. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, can you have this? Can you have this? Yeah. So he's ready for it. <laughs> yeah, he's ready for it. Yeah. And now it's without a doubt, you listen to any Chevelle track. Within the first couple of seconds, you're like, oh, that's a Chevelle track. I haven't heard that one. Well, that must be Chevelle. Oh, cool. And, and then, you know, as soon as your voice comes on, then that's a dead giveaway. Nice. That's um, good. Um, and yeah, and that's, that is great because, you know, I've been a fan since like 2000s, 90s. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's kind of great because when I get a new album from Chevelle, I know it's going to sound like Chevelle. And a lot of yeah. bands, they'll, they'll, they'll change their sound, try different things, yeah. which is also cool, but sometimes it's always like, oh man, it's always the old albums that I like to listen yeah. to. Yeah. Is that something like a conscious thing that you do to as, just keep your sound? Or? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good compliment. Thanks. Um, I mean, we just work off the cuff a lot. I mean, we just work in the moment. And uh, that's kind of how we've always written. You just write what you sound like, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do try and, you know, try new things. I have a lot more pedals now, a lot more like yeah. stomp box, you know, guitar pedals. And that plays into new sounds and things like that, reverb, you know, that we didn't use a lot in the past. But, um, man, <clears throat> we just kind of, you know, we, we want to try new things, but you don't want to lose your old sound. You know, you don't. I don't, I don't want to ever not be like known as a, a somewhat heavy band you know we're actually leaning towards more heavy yeah mm. even though there were songs like twinge and one ocean on the album but there was no acoustic track on this one and that's yeah. you know if we do acoustic in, in the future it's probably going to be you know a side project for me or whatever yeah but this band is going to get heavier so that's, yeah. that's good it is it's, it's still the music that inspires us because we have to get up and play it every day you know on stage so it's what we want yeah. it's what we want to play you'll see in the set tonight it's like most of our heavy stuff it's just more fun for us now I don't know for some reason it's like maybe it's like a reflection of how the rock scene is um, mm-hmm. in the states right now like we're losing some stations around the country mm-hmm. and it's almost like it just feels better to get on stage and play our heavy stuff and say no this is where we started yeah. this is what we love yeah is that just because less, less stations mean they're going to sort of refine you down to the more radio friendly songs. exactly and they don't play they don't play a lot of heavy stuff on radio anymore yeah. not not yeah. the typical alternative rock stations in the states alternative has gone very it's very pop yeah. yeah so that just makes it even more you know stations that would normally play our music they're like well right now it's just yeah. so light that we can't really play your music so we've lost some support you just done it well you, not just but you did it tour in South Africa yeah we just did two shows I think that was about a year and a half right Mm -hmm. and um, we stopped in London and did one show on our way which was nice it was good to to lay over and we hadn't played in London in 10 years Yeah. and so we did that show and it went really well and we went out to South Africa and did uh, Cape Town and Johannesburg and did like six and 9,000 people it was was great that's great it was fantastic they were so happy to have us and they're super fun shows and um yeah, and we'll do it again. Yeah, I was very jealous not to be in South Africa to see you guys in South Africa. You bring different uh, music influences, or yeah, you kind definitely. of all listen to the same thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think it helps. You know, I've always said that he keeps me um, a little bit in check. You know, he's got a really good cheese meter. Like I get in his car uh, back at home, and 
it's all like really aggressive, heavy, you know, <laughs> every time I really? die and all that, you know, and it's cool, but I, I listen to more like, um, maybe I, I listen to a lot of different things, but usually it's like Depeche Mode in my car, Yeah. you know, so we, so he keeps me on the heavy path a lot of time or, or the non cheesy path, you know, yeah. if you know what yeah, I mean, it is that makes sense, but so yeah, we bring different things to the band a lot. Well, if you're going to have a little bit more screamer metal in Depeche Mode, that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of where, I guess, Chevelle sort of yeah. comes into the yeah. door somehow. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How much do you embrace uh, social media? Like, do you try to. Do you yeah. get involved quite a bit? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we're on Twitter, things like that. Yeah. And uh, Sam does Facebook. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's how you personally look after it. Kind oh, of. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, good. I, he, he completely does his Twitter, and then I have help with Facebook. Okay. I have somebody that helps me with it because I can't keep up on all of it. And the only downside, of course, to social media is that people go out of their way. The negativity. <laughs> the negativity. They go out of their way to find you to say something negative. Yeah. And I don't understand that at all. That is completely beyond me. The only thing I can say is anybody who's willing to go to somebody's website or, or social media or Facebook, whatever, and to say, just to say something negative, they have nothing going on in their life. They're yeah. They're just a waste of space. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah, I need to yeah. fix that. They're not putting anything out into the world that's good. Yeah. All they're doing is sucking up air. Yeah. <laughs> a little weird. Yeah, we're a little miffed about that, you can tell. <laughs> it seems like maybe you've had some bad experiences. Yeah, I mean, we all have. It's just <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. beyond me to think yeah, that. There's nobody that's immune to it. No. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it just it's a, it bums you out for a little bit, and then you have to like move on. So it does make you stronger, but at the same time, it's like there's nobody that, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. The thing that you Just, remember most, too, is when people do write something negative, it's the people who have no idea about anything you've ever done or whatever, and they just take you down completely. Like, oh, I've worked, you know, the better part of half my life, you know, writing music and, and doing things I want to do, not bowing to any pressure or anything, and then they just take you down. You suck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, fuck seriously. those guys. I know, <laughs> fuck those guys. That's right. And it's a, it should be easy enough to say that, but sometimes yeah. it does. Sometimes, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if only, right? <laughs> How long you live? You can write a song about them. Yeah. Well, someday maybe people will have to be responsible for the things they say. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all waiting for that day, aren't we? Yeah. I think the British government's actually cracking down a little bit on that now. Right? Yeah. Really? Yeah. With sort of sort of hate speech and social media and stuff yeah like that. Hate, yeah it's definitely hate wow. yeah there's all kinds of jokes being made about it you go to like somebody's like go to like a car website somebody's reviewing a new car and then you go look at the comments in the bottom and it's all racial and you know just anti-women and it's just nothing to do with any of the subjects and it's just crazy people yeah what's the relevance yeah um, I suppose so coming off the back of that now is um, do you do you ever sort of look out for reviews after you've done an album, um, no, no. Or, or do you just and do you take uh, maybe fan response more than reviews? You know what the best? Um, I don't know. The, the, at least my favorite place to get a review is after a show from a fan. You know, if they're hanging out after mm-hmm. after the show, yeah, then uh, then that's that's a cool place to. Uh, to get, I mean, they're probably gonna be into it, so maybe that's why I like it. But yeah, yeah. it's like, it, I mean, you know, the review thing, we've been burned by that. Like, yeah, you know, you can't really look at because that. a lot of times people just write reviews, you know, that they write a bad review, that's what people want to read it, and I get it and everything, but at the same time, sometimes our management or somebody will send us a good review, like, hey, I read this review, it was really good, they totally get what you're doing, and that's cool, and that's nice, and I'm happy to read that, but. You can't go search for that stuff. No, know, at right? the end of the day, it's just one person's uh, opinion anyway. And usually so, influenced by money. Yeah. 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 So, just trying to get readers. Yeah. Um, okay, so then to f- finish it off, his um, album's been out for a while. You're doing this tour now. Mm-hmm. What's next for Chabot? Well, I mean, it's easy to say that uh, we can just keep touring but we have man it's been and it's been difficult as far as um uh the, the whole video thing and everything it's been difficult and with youtube being such a uh, resource now that it's been difficult so we've just been doing um 
uh, lyric videos, which has kind of given us time to do other stuff. We've had some fantastic touring already in the States on this record. And um, now being here, we're going to try to come here like, every six months. And we'll start hitting different markets um, in the UK and, our, and across Europe and stuff. So a lot of it is touring. We are actually starting to write again. Okay. Yeah, and Pete's always writing. So he's got a phone full of ideas that we can start with. We um, put a studio into his basement now, which was in my basement. Now it's in his basement. And so we're hoping that to be a little bit m even more prolific than... Mm -hmm. than we have in the past and just write a little bit more because he'll have it right at his yeah. disposal yeah. instead of having to drive over to my house and it's gonna be nice yeah it is but we have some fun stuff coming up next year We're trying to combine some shows with some bands that we may not have played with in the past and uh see what comes up with that but we'd also like to go back to south africa yeah that'd be amazing. yeah mm -hmm. um, we'd like to go there every two years I and mean, we try to places that are really far <laughs> yeah. for us and very expensive like going to Alaska for us is actually it's just so so far and hard to get stuff there um, so we try to do that every two years and go to Hawaii and go to South Africa so it's really about touring and writing and um, and then maybe getting a little bit of time with, with, us. Our, with our families yeah there we go <laughs> yeah. yeah try not to be absentee fathers right yeah <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks very much, guys. Yeah.